Well, you are watching UBC TV Inspiring Uganda, and you are watching UBC News Night for Ms. Sharon Chomjishan Mugalu Mohammed on Sign Language Live from the Nile Avenue at exactly 10 p.m. Welcome and a very good evening. We'll take a look at our top stories of the day. In our headlines today, do not evict anybody. Land Minister orders Nakasongola landlords. Marta residents floating COVID-19 SOPs. All well, schools resort to gardening, renovating classes in a time like this. And in our sports news, Nazli bows out honorably as Semuju prepares for Monday. Good evening once again and welcome to UBC News tonight. In our top stories of the day, the Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Judith Nabakova, has directed police in Nakasongola district to halt land evictions where over several residents in Kigejo, Mairikiriti, Kayebe, among others, have been issued with eviction notices. Nabakova made the pronouncement while visiting the district of Nakasongola upon invitation to address the continued land eviction in the area. Details in this report. The Minister for Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Judith Nabakoba, has engaged in Nakasongola district residents on issues of pending land evictions. Former Minister for Karamoja Affairs, Engineer John Biabagambi, is allegedly the landlord itching to evict these residents. <laughs> Barand Road, Bariko Mukaga. Era your problem, Nigeri. Wake up, we have a gambi. Simani said, and the Bamuwa was in Malaka to your Granga Konega to remove Parliament. Nine of the Vines of Kamaka Million is Zuero Rukaga, Gachava and General Zikoze, the Cigar Day. I take a cut of Maria Gonga or Kujan Tatia in a fraudy. I take a cut of being made down. The first engagement was held at Mary Kitty Primary School. Era or Chidam Sera, a Chava and Tamazika, Jibaka Kavira, no. Local leaders fought the area district land officers, police and the judiciary for siding with land grabbers in the area. Between a challenge, um, area courts. And those who own the land, who want to steal land, they have the money. The money that they would have used for paying to buy land, they use it in the court. But one way which I see that can help us to streamline the processes in the registry is a hundred percent automation of the systems because if systems are automated definitely if somebody is trying to duplicate a title then definitely an alert will come and they will know that oh, there is another transaction which is trying to take place they now want government to bail them out using the land fund now the way forward it's only government to come in Take, uh, give Nakasongole priority and pay off all the landowners. On her way to Chigejo, Nabakoba met a section of residents whose land was recently fenced off by one investor. Residents of Chigejo, Kayebe, Chibanja, Dagala, among others, are also living in fear of being evicted. 
Like it is the case in my Rikiti, where government had partly paid off the landlords in Chigejo, though one Nicholas Jemba received cash from government to surrender his land to the occupants, eviction notices are now being issued. Batu gamba nti bagenda bagala kutukutugira ate batu gamba nti government yatugulira ettaka na yene ttaka government yatugulira te tulaba Nicholas Jemba want him government to pay him once and for all the people of Chigejo get their titles and they sit, sit peacefully even the leaders will be held accountable not to allow any more transactions to take place because the owner has agreed to sell that piece of land to government. The minister warned against any further land evictions in the district. Then the security has to put a firm stand and make sure that the population is protected because that's what His Excellency wants. He wants all Ugandans to be happy. Police and Yami personnel attended the briefing. Robert Onyango, UBC News. In more news today, Morita district leadership is worried about residents' failure to observe COVID-19 SOPs like wearing masks, washing hands and social distancing. The district health officer, Dr. Hans Lokale, says that they're challenged with residents who refuse to get tested for COVID-19. Details in this story. Coronavirus continues to ravage communities across the country, including Karamoja sub-region. However, where in Moroto, it is abundantly clear that residents are not bothered about observing SOPs, social distance, and neither are they committed to wearing face masks. <laughs> Though a number of business owners have tried to put up hand-washing facilities, it will seem that clients are less bothered about hand hand Currently, Moroto has 10 people in the ICU, 27 are on home based care, while 15 have succumbed to COVID 19. Vaccinated a total of uh, 3,140 eligible persons. Uh, a small percentage of them have been those receiving the second dose. I think about 600 of them have received the second dose. Moroto District Health Officer Dr. Hans Lokale says that there has been a reduction in infection cases, especially in the communities. The villages are okay. We are not reporting any cases of COVID from our villages in the Manyatas uh, because we, we prevented people from going there unnecessarily. Locally and the deputy RDC Jacob Ojonga confirmed that people failing to observe SOPs is the greatest challenge affecting management of the spread of COVID-19. These people who are, who, who are managing from home under homeless care, today you tell someone, you give them the instructions, the home, the next day you see them in the market, and these are responsible people. On the outskirts, the, the rural part of Moroto, that is Nadumet, Tapach, and uh, Nakiloro, Na, Nakiloro, Noktok, and Rupa, all those areas. Some of them come to town here even without masks. They don't have masks, most of those people, and that has been one of the challenges. They come from the villages, they go to the shops, the supermarkets, and that kind of things, and that has been one of the challenges. Then the second challenge that we still face is that compliance by the border borders has been uh, um, so minimal that some border borders have occasionally been formed uh, carrying passengers, people, in, uh, instead of carrying. Dr. Lokale asserts that they are challenged by people who have refused to take the vaccine. Of, of people not accepting the vaccine, and uh, we will still engage in them on the benefits of vaccine. The vaccine may have side effects, but the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risks that they may have in their minds. So those who are fully vaccinated, those are good ambassadors. We are trying to use those who have taken up the vaccine. They have not had any issues. Proto District Police Commander Abebe Aruhaya says over 70 people have been arrested, remanded, and some have been charged instantly. Special guidelines. Some people don't believe that corona is there. So we try by all means to tell them to make it to them that if you have not lost a relative, thank God. But Corona is real. Locally adds that limited staff is another challenge since they can't monitor those on home best care. The team that does home best care, is, is, they're not big enough. And uh, they've worked for the last one year uh, without any risk allowance. That's one of the challenges. And um, not every health worker is willing to deal with COVID positive patients. They still have the fear. 
Locale calls upon fellow medics to be keen while on duty to avoid contracting the virus. Health workers to observe the SOPs, make sure they are wearing the double face mask, they have their hand sanitizer with them at all the times. If they must examine a patient, they should wear their gloves and dispose them off safely. We are also encouraging them to, to avoid crowding of patients who are coming to their facilities. Over 55 vehicles were impounded, 40 people arrested, and that six are lent in court. At least 4 million shillings has been received in instant penalties for violating SOPs since the second lockdown was instituted. Moving on, a security sweep in Karamoja has led to the recovery of guns and magazines. The intelligence-led cordon and such cooperation combed Lomania village in Loletio sub-county, Kochido district for the lethal weapons. Over 50 suspects were arrested during the exercise and are now detained at Kochido Army Barracks. Uganda Police Defense Forces have conducted a gun search operation in Nomania village, Kotido district. The early morning search operation harvested guns and ammunition and suspects detained at Kotido Army Barracks. After gathering information, we make sure that we have the guides and really it yields the results. Because this is not the first time when we launched this operation called named uh, Usalama Kwa Wote. Uh, we have been achieving using intelligence and this is the only way that we can uh, uh, succeed. We cannot use any other means apart from intelligence locating where these criminal groups are hiding and this is what happened today. Must return and this problem of Karamoja is for Karamojong themselves. The Karamojong problem, Karamojong solution. Even this intelligence-led operation is done using the Karamajong themselves. After two hours of search, with the help of one woman, they have vested two guns hidden in a kraal. The third division commander, Brigadier General Joseph Barikudembe, explains that more intelligence-led operation will be conducted. The better way is to hand over your weapons to government, because this is a preserve of the UPDF, the, UP, the preserve of the army that we are supposed to be the ones to handle the, the, the weapons of such a kind. So those ones who are still hiding, I want to warn them that before we catch up with them and they get heavier sentences, the only way is to surrender. Brigadier General Balikudembe says suspected criminals will answer questions in regard to illegal possession of guns in the courts of law. However, the commandant and stock theft unit, Elias Kasirabo, says conducting forcefully gun recovery is hard but convenient. The LC5 chairman, Kotido District, Lote Paul Komol, asked leaders in Karamoja sub-region to support the disarmament exercise. They are doing the same thing. They are making sure that they talk to their sons and their daughters, and their, their husbands to their daughters, in returning back the gun because it's very harmful. Uh. He urged those with guns to surrender them. Brigadier Balikudembe promised that insecurity will end in Karamoja if residents cooperate with the forces. Those who surrendered guns to the forces were given voluntary disarmament certificates. Protection of borders so that illegal guns don't, don't enter the country. But we shall do our best to ensure that we, we disarm both voluntarily and forcefully. However, Loti asked government to help those who voluntarily surrendered their weapons. The woman councillor, Nakaperi Moru, sub-county, Kotido district, a called Grace Itai, says women are playing a big role in ensuring that peace returns to Karamoja. Ever since Wusalam Kwawote operation started in Kotido, several guns have been forcefully recovered from the Karamajong. Still in UBC News tonight, residents of Kiriatete Western Hoima West Division have this morning woken up to a bad incident following the dumping of human remains at the gate of one of their residents. The casket has been dumped at gate of Tivamenya Amos, commonly known as Amos Electronics, who is a businessman in Hoima City. Details follow. 
Hoima residents are perturbed by bad-hearted persons who ostensibly dump human remains near people's residences. This follows a recent incident in which a child's body was dumped by unknown people in Chiriatete, West Hoima, West Division. <laughs> Police officers from Hoima CPS are currently investigating the incident. The incident has raised mixed reactions from onlookers as some were saying that it was business wrangles while others said that Amos acquired his money from underground. <laughs> This had taken the casket. Some pastors came and prayed with some family members so that Kai George Nyonzima, UBC. Despite the end of the 42 days COVID-19 induced lockdown closing in, the spirit of giving to the needy continues to grow and spread wide. Sunday morning, residents of Bukoto 2 Parish in Nakawa Division were the lucky ones to benefit from the donation of food relieved by leaders of Way to Heaven Church or Pastor Dorian Kamese. Pastor Dorian Kamese justifies her move to defy government directive of donating through the area COVID-19 task force saying it would not quench her thirst of directly impacting her community. Details of this report. Government recently issued a directive that donations by individuals be delivered to district COVID-19 task forces or to the office of the Prime Minister as it was during the 2020 lockdown. But Pastor Doreen Kamese of Way to Heaven Church has individually offered food relief to residents of Bokoto 2 Parish, Nakawa Division. The LC1 chairman, Sempaka Zone, Bukota 2 Parish in Nakawa Division, Stephen Serwada, oversaw the distribution exercise. Tuina muna habana haba pichi pichi na haba taxi banji nyo. Na kuluwa haba tako zeta so wakuda yu wakana chakulia. Heda tuwa detuluwa na ukula wikanti tuwa yamba wanone wali. Ateka tonda uya tuwele do mkisa haba kule mbezewe kanise eno. Neba tulo uzako. Heda uwa duki deko ero sine. Neba tuga mbaba ina uche vaso ulo gabana na echaro cha fe. Tuwa sanyu senyo. Serwada says. Government's directive is a nail-biting task due to the petrifying conditions that most families are facing following the 42-day lockdown. People are yearning for food, people are dying of hunger, and you, you get a, a good person like this one says, I have some food I can give to the community. You cannot wait and, and go to the, to the RCC, you go to the DPC, you go to what? When people are in need of food and the food is there. What we do, we just try to, to guide them for the SOPs, and we give them the food and I twagade okuwa community jetubiramu okujigasa okujigasa bwebaga mandi church eri wali tetwaje kusoroza sente mu bantu kati nange njagade kugasa community yafu chichibade chigendera change pastor kamese argues that giving is not only for the haves to give to the have nots but a sacrifice just as god gave in his only son to die for salvation Eh, tubeko chetuko la tudiza bantu bafe kubanga mu bisere birunje batu baleta kati nafe mu bisere bibi tubadize ntine wali we biro bitu ino kuteka okutereka no bira we biro bitu lino kuzeri abantu abantu banje bibuza ikanisa kati yekoze eti feche tubatu bavude yonge kanisa tugamba tukoze tutia okudiza ku bantu bafe oba no kubera bo mugaso mu kitundu jetubera she have missed no words appealing to the members of the general public to continue observing the set SOPs at all times as a sure way of curtailing the spread of covid-19 kati baba bange teka rigamba tunabengalo tunabengalo eteka mebiga ndi churches igale we yafenzi igale uri jamaka nzigule yafenzi igale tugale bo tusobole kubanga twetaka kusumba abantu Tueta aga kule mbira bantu. Atebe bana hafa tunakule mbira chi. Kati tugele wo. Atemu kwa nangu wangejo tambula naba. Sanitizer tolinda waku wakedi. Tolinda waku, waku kanisa. Tambula ni sanitizer wo. Buli kasera wo ulidide. Nga we, we teka ko. Togamba. Tugonde la mateka. Gebatu tela ko. 
tusobolo kuonyo bulamba in total over 200 people partook of the one ton of maize flour and another of beans dokas kimono ubc news Still about the spirit of giving while well, civil society organizations want government to integrate voices of the young people in national policy formulations. The executive director of Gallup Initiative Uganda, Monica Nyaguhawa, says the COVID-19 lockdown continues to bite girls and young women hard, but this does, and she still wants their concerns to be given attention. Haromaraj Fancy Shida, a lady in her early 20s, is pursuing her Bachelor of Laws degree from the Islamic University in Uganda. With a few months to complete her dream course, government announced a 42 day long lockdown that has caused more harm than good to many girls and young women. Since childhood, Sheila tells UBC her desire was to become the first lawyer in the family. I should say I'm even still dreaming about it <laughs> until I actually get the feel of I am a lawyer. But I want to say, what was set for me as a young girl and a woman in my domestic setting at home drove me to, to, to want to be a lawyer and the need to actually be a lawyer. First, the expectation of uh, you're a girl and uh, you cannot do much. You're supposed to do nothing. You are supposed to be a secretary. You're supposed to be light to yourself. But then I'm like, no, I don't think that's what I want to be. I, I am a daring person. I, I love to test rough waters of life. I want to challenge myself every single time. So I'm like, the legal profession could be a great one. She says this would later not only amplify her visibility to be seen, but also her voice to be heard in society. There is a great saying, you cannot be a representative of something you do not represent. And that can come from if I do not have a representative, meaning I'm not being heard. So if I'm not included in decisions that are being made, then I'm not being heard. If we as young girls and women are still seen as, you know, you cannot, you're supposed to be at this level and not the other level, you cannot talk this much, you can knock, that's what I want to challenge. That's what I want to talk about. We can do it. As a girl and young women rights advocate, my conversation with her at their home in Kuatule was to get her views on the effects of COVID-19 among girls and women, especially in the light of increased teenage pregnancy. There are countless number of young girls and women who want to access services, but they cannot. And even if they had the phone, many of the services that have been put on the online platform are pretty expensive. I do not earn. So this sends me as a young girl to think of ways of earning money engaging in transactional sex or doing something so I can get money to access a service or get money to get food. A report by the UN Children's Body UNICEF on the impact of COVID-19 lockdown among school-going girls and young women. In Uganda, it is indicated that between March 2020 and June 2021, there was 22.5% increase in teenage pregnancy among girls aged 10 to 24 seeking first continental care from 80,653 to 98,810. Claire Kumu, a peer educator, says even before the lockdown, young girls, especially those with physical disabilities, have always had challenges of accessing sexual reproductive health services. Society thinks we are too young to perhaps access our contraceptives or our pregnancy related services yes so because of this you find very many girl, young girls are engaging in transactional sex and are exposing themselves to very risky behaviors and even pregnancies but because of the age discrimination we cannot access these services and it's even more difficult for girls with disabilities like myself yes because society thinks that should not feel this as a girls and young women rights advocate and the peer educator activists respectively. Sheila and Clay are now empowering young girls to realize their full potential under the SheLeads campaign spearheaded by Gallup Initiative Uganda. They blame lawmakers for undermining youth's views. And our voices, yes, we speak up and we are heard, but we are never taken seriously. No action is actually taken to follow up on what we are contributing or what we want to see them do for us, but rather, uh, stakeholders are uh, 
decide to make decisions on their own. We are not involved from the grassroots. Even as you tell a girl, you tell her you actually have uh, the ability to determine something for yourself or make a good decision. But then she's like, no, but I was told this. I was told I, c I don't have to speak up. I have to always just listen. I can't talk back. I have to being respectful is being quiet. The executive director Galap Initiative Uganda, Monika Nyiraguhewa, says getting the voices of girls and young women heard goes beyond having youth representation in parliament. All we are saying is that people should appreciate that it's important that as we make policy, as you represent us in parliament, but are you listening to our voices or are you assuming in terms of what we require? Monica attributes challenges facing girls and women to negative gender social norms and believes in the SHIELDS campaign to change the narrative. And therefore, we believe that rolling out this SHIELDS program, we are able to add a unique approach to already what we are doing. We are hoping that by the end of this project, we shall be able to register key, key, key significant changes because we are beginning to do things differently. Gallup Initiative Uganda is a young women-led organization that provides young women and girls with opportunities to thrive as leaders in their communities through a holistic education and economic empowerment programs. Bernard Higa, UBC News. Well, thank you so much, Panajika, for that wonderful report. Indeed, youths should be listened to. Now, in more stories, the education sector, like other sectors, has been grossly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. In some private schools in Mitiana, Kalongo, and Luero, proprietors are now renovating the school premises, including buildings. Details in this report. It is a few days to the end of 42-day lockdown aimed at managing the further spread of COVID-19, but school managers can't wait and are itching to impact on teaching. The Minister of State for Higher Education, Dr. John Muhingo, wants teachers and other stakeholders in education to engage in agricultural production and renovating their schools. We are developing to revamp and rehabilitate all, the, all our education institutions in the country especially those that were established long ago. We started, we started off some time back with the with that chapter you have seen, but we have a plan to rehabilitate and revamp all these schools into something that will be attractive to the children who come into school when they are not, uh, when they are happy. Because the environment also contributes greatly to the dropout. At St. Mary's High School Mukoko in Kalungu District, teachers are looking forward to having a paved compound and renovating their buildings. The proprietor of St. Mary's High School Mukoko, Godfrey Barire, says despite schools being under lockdown, they ought to use the period to renovate their school compounds. <laughs> He, however, commended President William Seveni and the Minister of Health for efforts aimed at stopping coronavirus from further spread. Mitiana Modern SS agriculture teacher Beatrice Kagole says the school decided to use the available 20 acres of land for crop production. To feed the students and the teachers and at least look forward to helping us where necessary by providing the, like the tractors for plowing because now here we, we are cultivating sometimes you find that the manpower to put here is too expensive but when we have a tractor and those irrigation machines the work becomes a bit easier Kagole added that Uganda majorly agricultural country embracing farming is a good idea Edwin Yashwara UBC News Now, cases of domestic violence, child neglect, early marriages and child pregnancies have continued to soar in many parts of the country, including Kabale District. Reports indicate that in just one year, 1,867 underage girls have been impregnated and a good number of other children neglected by their parents over family conflicts. Some have since fled their homes, leaving their spouses and children to live on the masses of well wishes. Ambrose reports. 
High teenage pregnancy is rocking communities across the country, a scenario attributed to rampant alcoholism, poverty, unfaithfulness, and parental neglect. We have neglect as a kind of violence that the children suffer, that even the adults suffer, but in most cases not reported about, but usually reported on children. The situation has been exacerbated by women who have abandoned their homes and resorted to commercial sex. As a result, children are being neglected, which has forced some of them to flock streets looking for survival, educational materials and other essential needs. And that is very unfortunate. And actually that's where the dilemma is, where a man withdraws from responsibility of his home to care for the children, to control their discipline and being physically present in the lives of these children. It is lacking and for that reason we have poor parenting practices. The mother is overstretched. 38 years old Kembabazi Rose is a resident of Ruwira village in Chanamira sub-county Kabale district. She says that her husband deserted her with her two children several years back. With nowhere to start from, she sought refuge from the nearby church where she stayed for three years as she engaged in casual work, including washing people's clothes in order to get some food for her children. <laughs> Kembabazi would also save some money of her earnings, which she used to rent a house where she's currently staying. This situation could have negatively impacted her elder child. I attribute this to my dad who divorced with my mom and didn't care of and did not take care of us again. When he left, we were stranded. We never had what to what to eat, the school fees. Ampumuza's tale is not any different from that of Biamukama David, a resident of Muyebe in Buhara sub-county, and Okiriza Melissa, a resident of Ruakaraba in Northern Division, Kabale municipality. This is after they were abandoned due to a disagreement that led into separation and divorce. Whereas these children wish to remain at school and ending wrangles in their families, could not allow them to do so. The management used to, to send me from school, but God would touch, I come back, I would even go back with, to school without fees. I got sponsorship from Child Africa. I was helped by Madame Julie Solberg, the director. She, she began giving me school fees. Child Africa, a non-governmental organization, later offered them free education and they scored good grades in the recent PLE exams. We had 30 children this year, that is 2020, and all of them passed in Division 1. Mwanika Augustine says that the school hosts a number of children from Kawale district who have undergone trauma caused by domestic violence. These people know Madame Jury. Whenever she comes around, they know her car. The moment they see her around, they definitely go to her premises and then they ask for help. And uh, we have got a lot of children who are coming in school on the masses of Madame Jury. Upon arrival at the school, the needy children tend to be subjected to guidance and counseling in order to arrest their earlier trauma. Uh, when these children come here, they are traumatized. They have a lot of psychological torture in their mind. We have a program of career guidance on our timetable. The first week is orientation week. We first take through, we take them through an orientation. We talk about the things that they have gone through. Definitely, before they join, we must have interrogated the parents so we know what the child has gone through. We ask all the needy children at Child Africa scored first grades, hopes of joining secondary school hangs in balance, as sponsorship looks to have ended, though some are still optimistic. It's the help of our director who is kind-hearted, who is kind-hearted, and he promised us that when we all come in a first grade, and I think the whole class came in a first grade, uh, he, she will she will promote us to another good secondary school. Besides that, COVID-19 lockdowns have led to teenage pregnancies. In Kavale district, over 1,867 teenage pregnancies have been recorded so far and over 350 cases of domestic violence in just one year. It has never happened in Kavale. By, by May this year, we reported 1,867 
teenage pregnancies. It has never happened in the life history of Kabale District. Violence against women and girls in Kabale District has always been condemned, but the trend is yet to be resolved. At this level, women are being physically and sexually assaulted. 21 within these 42 days. And among them, I have two 13-year-olds who have been sexually abused and they are impregnated. I have one who has been impregnated by her own biological father. Please, I encourage men and women outside there to take care of their children, to take care of their family. Love your family because tomorrow these are the people who are going to stand with you at your old age. Leaders are asking government to strengthen police close watch, probation officers, local council courts and supporting community-based organizations like Child Africa to provide legal and psychosocial support to the victims of domestic violence. Too sad to even be able to speak about, but we hope that those children get the help that they need. Moving on from that story, Bishop Stewart University Administration is seeking for a tax waiver on learning materials to facilitate e-learning. The university's Vice Chancellor, Professor Mao de Kamatenesi, wants government to enable students access cheaper smartphones, laptops and internet bundles for easier learning. This was at a press conference held at Kakoba University campus and details on this report. The Vice Chancellor Bishop Stewart University, Mauda Kamatenisi, has asked government for a tax waiver on ICT equipment like smartphones and laptops to facilitate e learning. Kamatenisi requested parents to change their mindset and understand that, regardless of COVID 19 pandemic, education must continue. To remove or reduce these taxes and let them be tax free so that access and compliance is high. Where Uganda is now, with this lockdown and globally, we are not going to stop education. Education is a need. It is one of the essential services, particularly to help the youth and everybody. This was at a press briefing on sustainable higher education through e-learning conducted at the main university campus, Kakoba, in Barara City, South Division. Kamatenesi asked parents to support their children to acquire smartphones, laptops, iPads and internet bundles to help them study online. Well, we'll take a short commercial break and we'll be back with more news. We cut and reduced our MTN Momo withdrawal rates. Now you can withdraw mobile money at the lowest rate. You also get MTN Sentry Points when you deposit, send and withdraw MTN Mobile Money. Visit our Momo agents countrywide and withdraw mobile money at our reduced rates from 1st May 2021. Everywhere you go, MTN. As the financial year 2020-2021 draws to an end, URA has put measures in place to facilitate taxpayers to file their returns and pay taxes within the set deadline. All our offices across the country and the URA contact center shall remain open to provide extra support to our esteemed taxpayers. Additionally, we have extended our contact center service hours from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., Monday to Friday, and from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays and public holidays. In light of the COVID-19 risks, we encourage taxpayers to reach us through our improved contact center and other online platforms instead of making physical visits to our offices. For online support, please reach us through our toll-free lines 0800-117-000 or 0800-217-000. Email services at ura.go.ug. Website ura.go.ug. Social media, Facebook, URA page, Twitter at URA Uganda. URA Customs Help Tool, help.ura.go.ug slash login. URA appreciates all taxpayers who have duly fulfilled their obligations. Stay safe and let us all observe the standard operating procedures to prevent further spread of the COVID-19 virus. Stay safe as we develop Uganda together. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Echa COVID-19 chijakugwa only if we stay at home. Observe physical distancing. Wear masks properly 
Sanitize or wash your hands with soap and water regularly or get vaccinated now. In efforts to improve quality assurance and Uganda's competitiveness as a tourist destination, Uganda Tourism Board is set to undertake a nationwide grading and classification exercise of hotel and accommodation facilities. As a member of the East African community, Uganda subscribes to the East African Grading and Classification Criteria, a system denoted by stars ranging from 1 to 5. The grading and classification exercise will be crowned by the awarding of star ratings two facilities found compliant to the EAC minimum standards. This is therefore a call to all accommodation and facility owners and managers to register and get licensed by UTB as a requirement and get ready for participation. For more information, visit www.utb.go.ug or email qualityassurance at utb.go.ug for details. Uganda Tourism Board, promoting tourism together. Uganda first. Patriotism program in secondary schools was launched in 2009 by His Excellency the President of the Republic of Uganda, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, and he was focusing on secondary schools to make sure that uh, we develop uh, a generation um, among the youth that is patriotic and is ready to serve and to sacrifice for their country. Good enough, the president had a policy document. He, he, he went around, he met teachers. So when he appointed me to be in charge of the, the secretariat, the work was clear. Ensure you bring the teachers on board because they are the ones who ordinarily most of the time are with the young people. As a patriot, I joined the Patriotic Club in 2018 when I had just joined the mighty college, Trinity College, Nabingo. And each of us that joined that year, we had to undergo that exercise. I learned a lot of things because I was also given the responsibility to lead the parade by the You're still watching UBC News tonight. Now in our business stories, um, over 300 farmers in six cassava growing districts of central and eastern regions have benefited the Af from the African Cassava White Fly project that has been implemented by National Agricultural Organization, NARO, for a three, uh, three year period. Now the project aims at fighting the white fly that feeds on cassava, leaving bat also acts a vector to cassava brand strict disease and cassava mosaic. Cassava is one of the most important crops grown by farmers in Uganda and is a basic food for majority of families. This is mainly due to its ability to cope under any condition. However, this important crop is being damaged by the white fly that feeds on cassava leaves and also acts as a vector to cassava brown strike disease and a cassava mosaic that causes yield loss. To this end, National Agricultural Research Organization has been implementing the African White Fly Project in six districts that include Wikwe, Pugiri, Kamuli, Palisa and Serere. Under the project, cassava cuttings are first spread in a chemical before planting and then regulated spraying is applied in the early stages after germination. What is popularly known as citizen research involving the farmers in doing their own research with us so that they can see and believe, so that seeing is believing. The result is impressive. Farmers are appreciating that indeed spraying in the first four months is helping them to control the white fly damage. After three years of agricultural trials, the project has yielded positive results in controlling white fly. As farmers say, the yields have improved. Uh, I want to thank NARO and the government of Uganda for choosing Tic Tac, our group in the lower village here, to handle research. 
over the cassava. And also there are good services they have taught us. Now that we know certain, I didn't know what they call a white fly. I saw those things were just flying there. I didn't know that they bring bad things, but I would also know. So once some government, let, let them continue identifying more groups. But as cassava yields improve, farmers are now asking government to help them have access to better market. Market is a very big challenge. Uh, we are seeing we are growing a lot of cassava. Chips dry is 300, 250. Even that 250, 300, there, is no, there are no buyers. The problem is, too, we don't have good access roads to market. Our roads are very, very bad. Government should help us improve on the road network system so that we access the market. The National Agricultural Research Organization is, however, trying to breed for resistance against the white fly. And here we are breeding for resistance to white flies, which is the first work in the whole of Africa uh, in getting resistance for white fly. So essentially what you see here um, are, I would call children, that came from seven parents. And these seven parents um, comprise uh, of three that came from Latin America and uh, the two that are local varieties that farmers have. And then we have two improved varieties uh, that are already also in hands of farmers. But of the two improved varieties, we have what we call Nkumba. And already we have seen Nkumba is actually resistant to whitefly and that's not our own bred varieties. Government is striving to protect the cassava crop because it plays a critical role in ensuring food security and household incomes. Adiana Kuti, Simon Odongo, UBC. Thank you so much, Adia Nakuti and Taimon Odong. The Rotary Club of Muyenga, Kansa and Muyenga Sunday Sunset and Muyenga Tankil have signed a memorandum of understanding to train border border riders on how to start side income generating activities. The Rotary Club Clubs will jointly sensitize riders on living in harmony with themselves and neighbors, especially in this lockdown brought by COVID-19. Border border riders are among the categories of people deemed to be affected by the ongoing COVID-19 lockdown put in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19. An initiative spearheaded by the Rotary Club of Muyenga now gears at offering skills to border border riders aimed at improving their saving culture and inspiring them to engage in other income generating activities like savings and credit associations. We are going to begin and implement it and then roll it out to as much as we can but we want to, to start with the number we can manage. Himakere University Don who is also the Rotary Club chairperson, Professor Augustus Mwagaba, says they have embarked on boosting financial literacy skills among border border riders to make them more vibrant and receptive. We have also uh, corporate agencies. I think all of this are going to help us because we think that border border riders, border border business is really at the center of, of peace and security, is at the center of, 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 of ensuring that we can create employment. Many boys and men. The Kavalagala Police Chief Alfred Alida asked all riders to adhere to the President's directives aimed at preventing further spread of the deadly COVID-19. We are just praying if the remedies are got by the scientists, we shall get solution and the border borders will come back on road and we work. Because you are the precise mode of transport, mobility. Alira said engaging border border riders in income generating activities will help them overcome poverty and engagement in illegalities. Don't admit people whom you don't know them and then profile people. You have a book, you profile all your people. Whoever has come to distort your arrangement there and then you can report to the nearby police. Some of the beneficiaries of the training promised to improve themselves and pass over the knowledge to other colleagues. We have always had a mindset that Rotary is for only professionals and for people who are rich. But now I'm glad uh, uh, Rotary has 
come to the common man. The riders were also offered maize flour and beans to help them survive during this lockdown. Story compiled by Andrew Sabira for UBC News. From the international scene, the death toll from the devastating torrential rains in central China's Henan province rose to 63, with five people still listed as missing as of 12 or Sunday, local authorities said. Now, so far, more than 11,447,800 people have been affected by the heavy rains that started last Friday and then ensuing flooding, with about 876,600 hectares of crops damaged and more than 8,876 hectares houses destroyed across the province causing a direct economic loss of over 13.9 billion ones about 2.1 billion u.s dollars said lin shangshun deputy director of the provincial emergency management department about 1,382,000 local residents have been evacuated to safe places, Lee said. Now the Office of State Flood Control and Drought Relief Headquarters on Saturday dispatched working groups to cities of Zhengzhou, Hebi and Anyang in Henan to reinforce flood control and disaster relief efforts. In the provincial capital city of Zhengzhou, the working group inspected the city's subway Line 5, where they learned about the metro company's plan and arrangement, as well as the progress of drainage, and urged efforts to accelerate the drainage of floodwaters in the urban areas so as to create conditions for early restoration of power and water supply, communication, transportation, and medical treatment. Uganda's first ever female boxer at the Olympics, Catherine Nanziri, has despite losing to Japanese Namiki Tsukimi in an entertaining flyweight bout bowed out with honor. Nanziri approached this game against the vastly experienced Japanese with care and showed signs of causing an upset against a boxer whose record of 15 fights and 12 wins dwarfs Nanziri's three fights and one win. The Japanese dominated the fight and was a just eye of a unanimous points winner over Nanziri, who got no favor from any of the five judges. Next up for Uganda, at this 32nd Olympiad is middleweight boxer David Semuju against Algerian Wanis Nemeshi on Monday. Um, I planned my first match today, 25th, and it was quite tough because I did compete with a person who is more experienced and has more exposure more than me. And I do feel proud of myself because Olympics, it's a game where all champions meet. And me being one of them, it, feel, it makes me feel so proud of myself. Though I've lost the match, but I didn't lose hope. I think it has motivated me higher to go to the next level okay. for the coming next Olympics. Well, that's all we had for you tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in at 10 p.m. to be a part of the UBC News tonight with me, Sharon Chonjisha, and Galo Mohammed on Sun Language. From the team and I, have a lovely night and a great week ahead of you as you even start the month of August within the week. Good night. journey of Agoa. One of the things that first happened was to train over 2,000 girls. So there were many problems 
for investors at the time I joined Uganda Investment Authority. And 